Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the NWA uh, edition for the 7th of September 2021. Uh, NWA continues to be one of the better wrestling programs on television, or actually on the internet more accurately. We're say at a television deal, I think. Um, seeing a more wrestling-based product as opposed to the uh, much more sports entertainment-based products that are out there would do everybody good. Um, you know, it's the old milk does the body good, only it's, uh, uh, you know, whatever does the body good. Anyway, um, as I find out, The Miz has been confirmed for Dancing with the Stars uh, in a in a message right before going on the air. I know nothing connected to the NWA, but it's just goofy how. Um, anyway, show opens with Mae Valentine interviewing El Rudo and Jamie Stanley. She asked if they are going to challenge tag team champions after their play in victories. Um, and I don't know what that means. I don't remember the play in being something after they cut promos on everything, but then she dryly said, you didn't answer my question. It was if they really wanted to know the answer. Rudo has a little bit of charisma. Valentine didn't show uh, much, and she never really does. Anyway, we go to the commentary with regulars Joe Galley and Tim Storm and the NWA World Champion and special guest Trevor Murdoch said that Nick Aldis was there to give an update on his future. Murdoch said... He sent all this emails to connect with him, but hasn't heard back. And uh, anyway, tag team eliminator qu quarterfinals. I hate the eliminator concept and name. Call it something else. Call it a tag team tournament for number one contendership. That sounds like a good idea. Anyway, um, tournament for the future title shot is underway. And they could have shown some brackets. Um, and then, uh, Murdoch disappeared and Velvet Sky comes in, although she isn't even acknowledged on the commentary, she just starts talking. Odinson, uh, does some impressive stuff during the match and can move around quite a bit. Lots of power from Odinson. Uh, Austin Idol is out there, um, I guess scouting. Because I don't know that he has a full-on run with, uh, actually, Clearwater. I think he's still a affiliated with, although the story is kind of hard to to follow. Anyway, the end comes. Odinson hits a pounce on Clearwater, who uh, focused on a spray can. Uh, Paro hits choke slam on Sidon, his opponent, who I don't think we've even seen before. And Od Odinson hits a spinning back elbow on Clearwater. Uh, and then, uh, then he, then, um, Odinson, or Paro, hits a hell on earth. Uh, they go on to the semifinals, although who they face is unknown at this moment. Valentine is in the back with Luke Hawks, Airy, and she asks PJ, the son of Luke Hawks, about advancing to the next round against Colby Carino, and she added that, AG, that, uh, JTG was Carino's partner, um, uh, May Valentine just needs to go. Anyway, um, the, the Hawks, uh, team of father and son, w they would be the first ever tag, the first ever father-son tag team champions. It's implied they're in the, um, tag team tournament, but never outright said. Uh, Judas versus, uh, Jeremy Pluckett with Father James Mitchell. Uh, this is taped on a separate night, and I believe taped as part of the same night as the 73rd anniversary show. Judas wins the Battle Royal uh, at the, 70th, at the um, 73rd uh, anniversary show to be the number one contender of the North American Championship. Mitchell orders uh, him to be pretty... Uh, aggressive here, exhibition for Judas is squashed, uses a bunch of power moves, finish him off with the razor's edge in just a couple of minutes. Mitchell orders the move to happen again. That brings out James Storm from the back. He said that Judas should stop messing around uh, with Shetland ponies and go for Clydesdale instead. 
dumb line. Anyway, Mitchell said Storm is dressed for funeral, to which Storm replied, maybe a man, but we'll just have to see whose funeral it'll be. Jack Stane and Crimson does a long promo, kind of setting up their match. Could have been shorter, a little tighter. In the main event of next week's show, commentary puts over their split as a team. War Kings uh, as the end of an era. I don't know that we had uh, a full-on enough run with them as a team that NWA fans would care totally in the way they're portraying this. Kylie Ray defeats uh, Tootie Lynn, Lynn's hometown favorite from the St. Louis area, but everyone loves Kylie Ray. Uh, Ray moves into a bit more of a heel mode, hitting an elbow off a break, and makes fun of Lynn for her smiling pose. She does more aggressive stuff, stuff and rams her into the turnbuckle. Lynn hits a shotgun dropkick for near fall, hits a comeback, uh, Ray is on for scramble and goes for the charity case, charity case cross face for submission wins and the fans boo. Uh, at this point, I want to know basically how much, why these matches are booked and how they're booked. Just anyway. So, TV champ Tyrus, Black Jeeves, and uh, Jordan Clearwater and Austin Idol are out for promo. Kyle Davis is questioning. Some of their tactics and heel tactics and all that. Um, Austin Idol does a bunch of talking. Um, anyway, and nothing really gets nothing really gets uh, put forward here. Tag team title eliminated quali- quarterfinals. Mims and Tom Renato defeat Slice Boogie and Marche Marquette. Marquette and Boogie Boogie have teamed before. They work well together. Mims kind of looks awkward in there while uh, Ronaldo is um, kind of a bit more of a bumping machine. Basic match, tag match, basic psychology, Mims and Ronaldo. Uh, they get the win when Boogie is focused on Ronaldo after hitting a tilt a whirl backbreaker, giving Mims an opportunity to hit a uh, suplex, and then they get the win. Fans are into the finish of this. Uh, Davis is back with Marty Bell and Hale LaBlaze. Bell is half of the NWA Women's Tag Team Champions. Both women are uh, speaking both English and Spanish, so I guess they're trying to get kind of a multicultural feel to their team. Um, And then Davis said the NWA office decided that there would be singles matches between Bell and uh, Paola and Allison K and Genocide if Paola and or Genocide win their matches they get, or if K and, and or Genocide win their matches they get a title shot dumb way to determine a title shot to be completely honest anyway Nick Aldis closes the show video um, uh, recaps including the loss here uh, Aldis women's champion Camille Adonis and Tom Latmir come out Aldis apologizes to Davis for punching him recently and puts over Billy Corgan in what they built in the NWA. He acknowledges his accomplishment as a thousand day run, uh, a thousand plus day run as champion, and Murdoch being the better man. Uh, now Murdoch has to has the pressure of being champion. He says he's gunning for the world title again as Mickey James came out beside him. He finished up, and basically he's a baby face. Um, In any event, that'll close the show. We'll be back with more right after this.